Okay, folks, welcome to Coffee and Revelation, Monday morning, and we're at the church at Laodicea. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, these are the words of the Amen. This is Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I've acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so that you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, this is an extraordinary passage. It's the last of the uh, letters to the seven churches. I personally can see a great deal that applies in many of the churches, my own situation, and this one as well. It's a really challenging one, isn't it? <clears throat> so, Laodicea, let's just say something about it. It was situated on the river Lycus. There had three imperial roads that came into it. It was a wealthy commercial administrative center. It was famous for banks. Even Cicero recommended them for exchanging money. For clothing, especially the manufacture of carpets from the glossy black wool of local sheep. And it had a medical school. An eye ointment made from pulverized rock in the area was used there. Now all this is, it helps us as we see how Christ applies this. And it's a great lesson, by the way. Christ takes what is there, what they would know, what is local, and applies it. I think Jesus earths and connects things that people know and preachers should do the same. So we learn about Jesus and because, you know, time is limited, let me just make this very straightforward. He's the Amen. He's the Amen. Whoever invokes a blessing in the land will do so by the God of truth. He who takes an oath in the land will swear by the God of truth. For the past troubles will be forgotten and hidden from my eyes. Isaiah 55, verse 16. Jesus is the Amen to all our prayers. He is the faithful and true witness. And he is the ruler of God's creation. He is the beginning. He is the prime source. He is the origin. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 17. Hugely important for that. The church at Laodicea. Well... You get the words hot, cold, and lukewarm, and that refers to the waters around Laodicea. Hierapolis, nearby, had hot springs. Colossae, nearby, had a cool, clear stream. However, the river Lycus dried up in the summer, and so the water had to come via viaduct, and so it became tepid and lukewarm. Tepid, impure, and made people sick. And Jesus uses those three things to apply it to his church and to us cold because of the increase of wickedness says Jesus Matthew 24 12 the love of most will grow cold it's chilling thinking of our hearts chilling towards Christ but many of us get cold hearts hot they asked each other Luke 24 32 were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us burning hot just full of passion and zeal, or lukewarm, lost all concern to grow, to develop, kind of listless, compromisers, not willing to stand, lost all desire for gospel labor and witness. They'd been warm, but they had lost it. I venture to say, many of us have experienced that. Some of you may even be experiencing it now. And certainly, I think it's a predominant thing in many of our churches. And it's a gross image. Jesus says, you make me sick and I spew you out of my mouth. I spit you on the ground. You know, I know there are people who go, oh, Jesus, 
is not being very Christ-like there, is he? Which you think is so ironic. Forgive me telling uh, this story as an illustration. I won't name the church, but I was at a church once and there was uh, something going on and a lot of speeches and it was just endless praise for the church and I was asked to speak last and I had to stand up and to be honest, in my conscience, I felt that I had to say, no, this is not true. This church is not that great. And so I did, I said it. Um, I hope in a loving way, I don't know, but anyway, the person who was chairing the meeting stood up after me and just said, you know, I was completely wrong and apologized kind of thing. Anyway, as I left, I, I headed for the door and there were two ladies who came up to me and they, were, they looked very somber, and dressed in dark clothes. And I thought I have to avoid them. They came up to me and they, and they said, Mr. Robertson? I said, yes, and I expected to get an earful. And uh, I won't repeat exactly what they said, but they just said simply, thank you so much for that. That was making us feel sick. They used a Scottish phrase, that was giving us the book, just making us feel ill. And, do you know, we have to be so careful. I don't think we should be knocking ourselves down. I don't think we should be knocking other people down. But we need to stop praising ourselves when we're lukewarm. What is the solution? Verses 17 to 20. These people thought they were rich. I am rich and need nothing. Do you know, the second law of thermodynamics says this, a closed system eventually moderates so that no more energy is produced. Unless something is added from outside, the system decays and cools. Without added fuel, the water in the boiler becomes cool. Now you get the point, the church cannot be a closed system. We should forget about maintaining what we've got because what we've got won't last. So they are told, you need pure gold. You're wretched and pitiful, you need to buy pure gold. These have come, 1 Peter 1, 7, so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. White clothes, they were naked. Here's fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. The fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. We'll come to that in Revelation chapter 19. And naked, naked come to thee for dress, top ladies, rock of ages. And salve, they were blind. We need to be able to see the Lord and to see ourselves. And Laodicea, they would know this. Yet despite all this, look, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Christ loves them. He wants them to be rich. He wants them to be clean. He wants them to see. And he does that with us. See, we have this idea of love that kind of says, well, if you love someone, you affirm them. And if you love someone, you just go along with what they're doing. Mm. Christ loved, because it is because Christ loves us that he rebukes us. And so he tells us to be earnest and repent, to stir up the inner fire. For 2 Timothy 1.6, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. We are to let Christ in. In a sense here, Christ is being treated like a salesman at the door. We want to buy what he has, but we keep him out. We've put Christ out. Um, you may, I wonder if you can hear the rain chucking it down here in Sydney. Uh, but it's interesting, you know, that just, he wants to come in and eat. He wants to come in and have a full supper, not just a snack. Now, I think what's being said here, we let Christ, as we let Christ come into our hearts, we make him at home in our hearts and our life, so he will let us make our home with him forever. I think it's a wonderful picture. And as this rain chucks down, I'm going to go inside before it starts uh, pouring on me. But, you know, God bless you. And look, if you are cold, if you are lukewarm, Christ still loves you. But you need to be earnest and repent. And we need more spiritual reality like that in our churches, don't we? God bless you and see you tomorrow. Bye.